Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. Today we're going to talk about Exeter's Asian heritage, which although small, has been part of our story since the 1880s. We've already made a History Minute about the Chinese Educational Mission Program that brought Chinese students to town. You might want to check it out. At about the same time, Exeter, like most New England towns, was home to a Chinese laundry. After working in the California gold fields and building the Transcontinental Railroad, immigrants from China who'd intended to only work in the U.S. for a few years frequently decided to stay, a pattern repeated by many other immigrant groups. America had a lot to offer, even though it was less than welcoming to people from Asia. Undeterred, Chinese immigrants found a niche in the service trades, restaurants and laundry being the most popular. Why laundry? Iris Chang, who wrote The Chinese in America, says opening a laundry appealed to many immigrants because it was a fast way to establish one's own business. It required almost no startup capital, just a scrub board, soap, and an iron, and operating costs were low, since the laundry owner usually saved rent by living in his shop. This is the business directory for Boston in 1880. There are 90 laundries in the city. 43 were owned by Chinese businessmen. It was a lonely life, though. In 1882, the U.S. passed a restrictive law called the Chinese Exclusion Act, the only law that restricted immigration based on race. It was supposed to have a five-year limit, but instead was extended over and over until the 1940s. The law prevented immigration from China and later most of Asia, with only a few exceptions. It made it nearly impossible for women to come to the U.S., even to join their husbands. People of Chinese ancestry in the U.S. were not allowed to become citizens, unlike all other immigrant groups. Even children born here were not granted citizenship, a clear violation of the 14th Amendment. The first notice of a Chinese laundry in Exeter appears in 1886. The newspaper ad lists the owner as Sam Song. The town directory gives his name as Sam Singh. A competing newspaper calls the shop C. Wa. This is probably a good time to mention that English speakers made little effort to get Chinese names right. Transcribing words from Chinese to English wasn't handled very well. We really don't know much about this first laundryman. We know a bit more about his successor, Qin Han, who twice traveled back to China to visit his family. In 1893, he seems to have made the trip with little difficulty. Five years later, concerned that the Exclusion Act and immigration laws might cause his detention when he tried to return, he took the precaution of having his picture taken and affixed to his passport, an action that was so unusual it made it into the newspaper, along with a plug for the photography studio. He later sold his shop to Charlie Thing, who was most likely Charlie Singh of New York City. In 1915, the only Chinese laundry was owned and run by Chin Li. His shop stood on Water Street just across from the newly built Ioka Theater. Here's a photo of the shop. Chin Li ran the business alone with no partner. He appears on the 1920 census and reported to the enumerator that he was 52 years old, married, probably before he left China in 1882, spoke English but could not read or write in English. He toiled from morning to night doing hot, heavy labor all alone. His citizenship is listed as alien, not unusual in immigrant-rich Exeter at the time, except that he would never be eligible for citizenship. Chin Li died in his shop four years later. His remains were claimed by a brother who lived in Boston. It wasn't until 1937 that a child of Chinese parentage was born in Exeter. Little Priscilla Young was born in, to parents who'd managed to immigrate to America in 1928 during one of the most restrictive times. They'd lived in California, then Massachusetts, and after Priscilla's birth and that of her younger brother, moved to Rhode Island. Although we're highlighting these specific individuals and families involved in the laundry business, there have been other people of Asian ancestry in Exeter. Their stories of living, working, and going to school in Exeter will have to save for another episode. For more Exeter, New Hampshire history, check out our website at www.exeterhistory.org.